Welcome to the Stories of Starting podcast. I'm Heather Boyd. As a self-employed artist for the last 30 years, I'm fascinated with people's passions and creative projects. In this series, we discover how people like you have started new projects by thinking outside the box, going with the flow, and tapping into their childhood imagination. So, hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Today I'm here with my friend Patricia Sridley. Hi. Hi. So, Patricia, introduce yourself and tell everybody a little bit of what you do. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm an author and an artist. Uh, my name is Patricia Sridley, and uh, I do a lot of different things. I do, uh, I write books and I illustrate them, and I do collage and painting and sculpture and beading and pottery, <laughs> etc. <cetera. laughs> Yes, and we are in Patricia's amazing studio, <laughs> surrounded by a gazillion beads. I thought I had beads. No, I no, have no. nothing compared to, to you. Or canvases, uh, and work by others, artists to inspire. So uh, it's yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful workspace. It's fantastic. And uh, yeah, so I always like to start the podcast by backtracking a little bit okay. and telling everybody how we met. <laughs> so you might have to refresh my memory. I don't remember what year it was, but at least. 10 years ago, I would say. Oh, more. more. Well, yeah, more, more for sure. So yeah. we met We met at Stewart Hall when Patricia was selling at a uh, art show at the Lakeshore Artists Association show at Stewart mm -hmm. Hall. And at the time, I used to go every year to the show and I wandered by and I was super impressed at the time uh, Pat Patricia was selling exclusively, I think, the collages, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had never really invested in art, mm -hmm. and there was a piece that I loved with a baby with done in a collage, and I and I bu bit the bullet and I bought the piece, <laughs> and uh, we got to chatting. And I think at the time you just started writing, so you had kind of just mentioned it, but didn't we didn't really talk a lot about it. And then we didn't really see each other, and then we ran into each other one day in, in the IGA. Away. And that, then I came oh, back. Oh, that was it. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Yeah, that was a yeah. long time ago. Yeah. It was at least 15 years. Oh, my yes. goodness. That's yeah. crazy. So that's right, because you moved away. And uh, at the yeah. time, you were still teaching, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So why don't we talk a little bit about that, because you studied fine art, and you you started as a teacher. So tell us a little bit about yeah. that. I did teach art. Um, I, I have to admit, I didn't love it. <laughs> uh, when a high school, no Being wonder. a high school teacher, yeah, you do need to be a bit of a disciplinarian and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, as an artist and uh, probably quiet person, I wasn't. So, and it also, being a teacher, it left no time for me oh. to do my art, like yeah. not even a minute. Yeah. So, um, yeah, after about six years, I stopped. Yeah, so when I met you, you were doing collage, mm -hmm. and uh, over the years, you picked up, you know, beading, and you were doing pottery, and... Yeah. yeah. Well, I had always done pottery. You already yeah. did, always did pottery, um, yeah, because you had a kiln. Mm -hmm. I still, still have, have one, yeah. yes. Yeah, and I was a painter before I was a collage artist. Cool. Yeah. And uh, I, I just have always liked trying new things. Yeah. And the beading came from you, Heather. Oh, yes. Of course. <laughs> you started me beading. I corrupted you. <laughs> you did. <laughs> Thoroughly corrupted. Oh my goodness, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. no, you have so many beads now. I know Patricia yeah. goes to a lot of uh, garage sales and just, just hoards beads. And, and people uh, give me beads. And people give you them yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And then we've discovered a few really good bead stores in yeah. Montreal as well. I, I found one in Toronto this weekend. Ooh, <laughs> fun. I'm going to yeah. Toronto soon. I'll check it out. <laughs> Yeah, and so I know you did a lot of the pottery, and then you were doing some smaller pieces. Uh, you were doing little, um, you, well, you I, you did the bigger pieces, and you did masks, and then you did like little magnets. Yeah, I do the wall sculptures. They're right. quite large, and they hang on the wall. Mm -hmm. And to fill all the empty kiln space, I do smaller things, and I do nice. uh, pottery magnets because I, I do a lot of uh, arts and crafts shows. Right. And uh, yeah, the pottery magnets sell well, so. I make those. Yeah, it's fun yeah. to have items like smaller ticket items. You that need some smaller take. items at shows. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And, and of course, you do cards with your with your collages yeah. and your paintings. Yes. And yeah. uh, Patricia just showed me she's putting out a coloring book. So that's pretty cool. So oh, yeah, we the should. Test page. There yeah. we go. Here's the test page, and I'll insert photos of all um, 
Patricia's work in the blog and a bit in the video too. Yeah. So tell us how the how the uh, coloring book came about. This is a pretty intricate design. Mm -hmm. Well, I've wanted to do one for a long time because the collages, when you break them down into black and white and uh, using Photoshop, turn them into line drawings. Mm -hmm. They're really interesting and they have some subtle textures that you can color over with pencil crayons like so the textures will show through oh, I so I thought of doing it for about three years oh, and wow. I'm finally doing it <laughs> oh that's yeah. amazing and and yeah. you have a good printer in town that's mm -hmm. uh, does a lot of uh, does samples for you yeah. and your books and yeah. it's nice to be able to work so closely with the printer to be able to get sort of the types mm -hmm. of products that you want to yeah so that's fantastic yeah I love it very amazing. Yeah, yeah, and Patricia and I uh, used to do a lot of art nights too, so where we would experiment with different media. Yeah. And, and I yeah. know you're trying to focus a little more on, on cer certain specific media now. And, uh, and But tell us a little bit now about, about, say, let's talk about the beading, for example. What sort of things mm -hmm. have you been making with the beads? Well, I don't do jewelry. I make uh, little um, gods and goddesses, mm. and they to, they're to hang on the window or where, wherever else and yeah they're sort of good luck window charms and they're mm. all um, creatures like there's Dionysus the god of wine mm. and there's Poseidon and uh, guardian angels and there's I have about 25 characters now oh that's amazing I should have, I should have brought one to show you oh, you oh can show yeah, I'll, yeah I'll definitely put put the pictures yeah. in there but those yeah. are time consuming they I are. I know I'm always trying to encourage you to find shortcuts to do these things but I really think you're a glutton for punishment and you like you really like <laughs> putting all this time into little little well, no beads. they have to look just right I know or I'm not, I don't want to make them if they <laughs> don't look just right oh yeah. my goodness and then the collage <laughs> Collages, for example. Oh, yeah. How much time yeah. would go into your average size collage? Uh, well, I timed. Um, I I don't time how long it takes because it's just discouraging. But <laughs> <laughs> I did time the one I did for the Mount Royal Cemetery yes, show, yes. and it took uh, about ninety hours. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. So, I know when I work, I do a lot of multitasking. I'll listen to podcasts mm -hmm. uh, or things like that. And I know at one point you were listening to talking oh, books. Oh no, I still do. You still do yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, whenever I'm beading or collaging or painting, um, I'll listen to, yeah, I go through about three talking books a week. That's fantastic, yeah. you know, yeah. it's because when you don't have time to read necessarily, it's yeah. a good uh, yeah. a good alternative, oh, yeah, a good them. option. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And what, what are your favorite types of audiobooks? Oh, just the kind I write. Okay, sort cool. Of fun fantasy adventures. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And I had given up the collage for a while yes. because it was so time consuming. And, I remember. And you only had the one original to sell. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, in the last few years or the last 10 years, technology mm -hmm. has sort of allowed for um, working digitally and with yes. Photoshop. So, now when I create a collage, I can also use it for my cards and uh, my calendars and yeah. the t-shirts and even book covers. So yeah. I've gone back to it because I'm using it for different things. That's amazing because yeah. I had noticed in the last couple of years, you've really gone right back yeah. into the collage. And yeah. it's, it's true. If you can get multi-purpose mm -hmm. out, yeah. out of one collage, it's well worth the investment it of is, time yeah. that you put into it. Yeah. And uh, that's fantastic. That's a, that's a great way to look at it as well you know and uh, you love doing it but yet at the same time you have to make a living you right do. so yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really cool so mm. so yeah tell us a little bit about the writing because I remember when you told me you were writing a book I was <laughs> fascinated you know there's a lot of people that want to write books but you you don't go uh, you know halfway <laughs> you just went right how many books do you have I now? think well I have three coming out this year yes uh, children's one which I've geared it a bit younger. Um, I started doing illustrated children's books when I had my first grandchild, oh, which was fun. nine years ago. Wow. So this will be my um, eighth or ninth children's book. Amazing. Yeah, and it's Stomp, Stomp, Stomp the Elephant's Lunch. Awesome. <laughs> so it's, it's geared a bit younger than some. Yeah. And I also am uh, doing... Uh, a book for tweens, sort of pre-teens, mm -hmm. and that's the one. I have the advanced reading copy yeah. here, and so it's absolutely full of 
little sketches and yes. uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun to do. It was uh, probably almost three years in the making. Oh, I remember <laughs> when you first told me that about this yeah. book. I thought it was an amazing idea. I just love yeah. how you know varied it is, how interactive it is. It's just yeah. so cool. I'm so happy yeah. it's finally yeah. done. Oh, I know. <laughs> Oh, and there's a children's book. I did have one handy. Nice. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. Yeah, and then the teen ones. This yeah. was the first book I ever wrote that oh, Heather's wow. talking about. I yeah, love it. I love that book. Um, yeah, that was a beautiful series. There were yeah. four in the four. series. The yes. fifth is still in my head. But. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah, so that was the April, May, June yeah. series. Yeah. And uh, it's a fantasy novel. Fantasy what you call it? adventure. Fun, adventure. Fun fantasy adventure. Yes. Everything yeah. I write has a happy ending. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, Patricia and I were talking earlier about how with so with so many projects that she's working on, you know, the idea of how do you how do you sort of combine all these in a way that that people sort of know you for something, but something you know identifiable type of thing. Like we well, were yeah, as an artist, I, so many people tell me you should really only do sort of one trademark thing mm. and for me that's impossible yes yeah. I just like doing different things so yeah, yeah I'm trying to um, find a way to bring it all together mm -hmm. and uh, yeah so you were mentioning yeah yeah well yeah. we were we were talking about uh, also creating video uh, trailers mm -hmm. uh, for for her books and yeah. and to promote the books and uh, uh, on YouTube because already you have a channel you've done a few readings and different yeah. things yeah. but we spoke about the idea of having a, a persona yes that you would yeah. uh, that would be that would you would be able to use to overlap into the different sort of age ranges and things so, so I need to find the right hat to wear yes <laughs> Yes. For my we'll persona. Start with a hat, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Some funny glasses? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but definitely, yeah. you guys look out for this coming up. Uh, all kinds of really cool mm. uh, trailer videos and stuff. Yeah. Remember that time we filmed that? Oh, we, we were was, doing. You, was, uh, Patricia had a short story <laughs> in the. What well, it was a Canadian Quebec Writers Federation. Um, but, yeah, yeah, that's it. And short story. Short story. Yeah. Great story. I'll link up the. I'll link up the video <laughs> to the reading. But uh, we had filmed this. All these footage, you know, of like spilling wine and breaking glasses and making a huge mess in your old kitchen. And uh, I don't know what finally happened with all that footage. Oh, and the goldfish. Remember, we, you had all these goldfish. I was stuck with those for like three years. Oh no, <laughs> three years of all goldfish. in the name of art. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think we couldn't get the digital stuff to work. Maybe that was it. No, I that mean, was that it. That was a long time ago. We were ago. technologically challenged. Oh my god! And yeah. we had that your old Panasonic camera, yes. which oh. I bought one actually afterwards and used <laughs> it for a while for my videos. Mm -hmm. And then now, of course, a lot of it's just filmed on your iPod, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But no, at the time it was. It seems so complicated. Oh, it was. No, it, and for it was. Us, anyway. and it was. But now yeah. it's so much easier. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Video trailers coming. Video up. <laughs> trailers coming, and I was telling yeah. Patricia that the, the important thing on YouTube is the the thumbnail. You know, to yeah. have a really impactful thumbnail, yeah. and that's where the persona will come in right. to to yeah. uh, be able to be identified uh, when, when people go to your channel or or see it come up on YouTube. They'll know right away. Yeah, yeah. There's that crazy or... author artist woman. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah. so tell me a little bit about, uh, did you wake up one day and decided you wanted to write a book? Or how, how did um, that pop into, into your well, mind? Well, I never, I've always been very shy, and I never liked speaking in front of people. Mm. I'd rather listen. And I guess because um, uh, through life, you know, I, I tried things that, didn't really work for me like being a teacher it was yeah. not the right fit yeah. and um, I guess at one point I felt like I had lost my voice my speaking voice mm. and I replaced that with writing wow and I whenever I did my collages um, all my collages have a, a story at least yes. in my mind they all looking at them you can sort of probably imagine your own story mm -hmm. and so as I would do a collage it would have a whole story and wow. so um, I just switched 
to using words. And I found it very smooth. That is so just cool. Just telling my story with words instead of with paint or collage. Interesting, yeah. 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 And yeah. certainly, you know, collage being a very labor-intensive process, you would have time to even, like, like fabricate these stories. And they mm -hmm. kind of go hand in hand, I yeah. imagine. Yeah. That's so interesting. So, yeah, it was very natural, and I loved it, and wow. uh, still do. Yeah. yeah, that's amazing. And such yeah. a variety of the writing, too, you know. And I, I love that it was your, your grandchild that inspired inspired you to write the first because that's yeah. often the way right we're inspired yeah. by people around us yeah. or or what stage we're at in our mm -hmm. life uh, to do different things so. yeah and this year too i've written my first adult um book nice yeah. oh advanced reading copy <laughs> okay so this yeah. is yeah actually my sister got a little sneak peek at the advanced reading copy yeah. and and she she said she actually said this was her favorite one so far so oh good you're yeah. on the right track that's yeah. awesome and i yeah. love your covers too you Thank do all you. the artwork I for the, the artwork. for the covers yeah. Yeah. yeah that's amazing i just love it that's mm -hmm. cool yeah i'm excited about that one so it's funny on my, on my way over today mm -hmm. i was i was thinking you know about different things we would talk about in the interview and it occurred to me that i've never really asked you what sort of things you did as a child art related things were did you paint did you craft i know i was obsessed with crafts <laughs> growing up but yeah. i've actually never asked you <sighs> Yeah, I always did. You I was always did? drawing. Um, I had a chalkboard in my room and all kinds of colored chalk, and I would do beautiful pictures and then erase them and oh. do another one. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I didn't see. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. There we go. And when I was a child and colored in coloring books, I always colored in the lines. <laughs> in the lines? I did. Oh, well, yeah. That yeah. makes sense looking at the collages mm -hmm. now. Yeah. 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 So and, uh, teachers must yeah. have loved you. And I used to... <laughs> Well, yeah, no, I, for a while. Yeah. <laughs> then I got messy. <laughs> but no, I know my mom has told me we lived in a tiny little town okay. in um, Quebec when I was, I started school there in grade okay. one. So I was probably about four or five because mm. they didn't have kindergarten. Right. And there was an older couple who lived next door to us. And my favorite thing yeah. was I would walk next door. <laughs> And they had lots of magazines, believe it or not. Oh, wow. And the woman, her name might have been Ruth, I'm not okay. sure. She gave me scissors and I would sit on oh, their wow. floor and cut out magazine pictures for hours. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that makes total sense. Mm. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, funny that, that we've funny. never talked about this then? I never mm. I never knew that. But it's true. Yeah. And in those days, we had, remember the Sears catalog? I don't know if you used to I get probably the Sears cut catalog. Yeah. yeah, because we used to cut them up and make paper dolls yes. out of those. Yeah. And did you do yeah. the paper doll thing or it was mostly just to cut up? And I just remember cutting. Oh, and did you glue them down like a no, coach? No, I just not cut. Even. You just cut. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> You're not a serial killer, are you? Well, I would rather <laughs> take things apart than put them together. Oh, well, that's yeah. interesting. But how cool yeah. is that? So yeah. you did the chalkboard. That's also interesting, you know, making, putting all this time into an image and then just erasing it. Erasing it. It's sort of yeah. like the Etch-a-Sketch thing, you know, mm -hmm. you just... Yeah. Spend all this time and then just shake it out type of thing, you know. Yeah, I had one of those too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a good lesson in get letting yes. go. So that idea of like creating artwork and just letting it go, it's very, you know, appropriate for people that are very prolific artists because at some point you can't keep everything. Well, if you look around so my much. studio, <laughs> yes, that's very true. Oh my goodness. I remember yeah. at one point I went through a lot of my old sketches mm -hmm. from university and I just... I let them go. I just, yeah. at some point, you just cannot, keep you know, the best keep and it. Get and rid of the rest. That's and, it. Yeah. And at least now with digital photography, you can certainly yes. keep a, a little, uh, you know, sample of each yes. one anyway. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Wow. And so, uh, so I'd be curious to know a little bit about where you find inspiration for your work. I know that uh, you you have a cottage, you go out in the nature, you mm -hmm. like to walk, uh, we play Scrabble. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, I've, I've always, I get very inspired by cemeteries. Oh, yes. <laughs> and abandoned places. Ah, hmm. Yeah. Whenever I travel, I, I visit the cemeteries and I love the, how the statuary gets aged and weathered mm -hmm. and 
the statues will lose their heads in their hands and they'll yes. get all mossy and I just find this very beautiful and oh, yeah. I, I find that more interesting than an art gallery yeah um, and abandoned properties oh, oh I love finding those and going in if I'm brave enough <laughs> yeah there's whole Instagram accounts of people that yeah. document old abandoned places and hashtag you know abandoned places and yeah. so if ever you want inspiration in that oh, way okay. there's there's yeah. so much on Instagram yeah. and and yeah. you do uh, you do a show in the in the Mont Royal yes. Cemetery every yeah. year because I remember one year uh, Patricia got me to model for her in the oh, in the cemetery yeah. and we ran around and you took <laughs> photos and and you did a, a, a painting, at least a one painting, painting of me yeah. uh, sort of in that yeah, yeah. I d that was really fun yeah. and I mean I'm not a, obsessed with cemeteries but I, I understand the beauty of it mm -hmm. and there's something about the um even the lack of color in cemeteries too, because I I do like mm -hmm. black and white things yes. too, and and that's yeah. the the beautiful thing about a lot of your pieces done yeah. in the cemetery is they're very monochromatic, yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's very different from a lot of what you do with it's the collage, yeah. which yeah. is very colorful because it has a different mood when exactly. you're in the cemetery. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You like the nature. I know you like the ocean. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, I just, I do like being out in nature and being solitary and mm. always being on the move. Um, yeah. I find it difficult to sit still. Mm. Uh, it's uh, definitely, I, I remember, I think it was my birthday party or something. And we had the birthday party in the gallery and you were always like up and around and doing things. And and anytime, you know, we go places, it's, I'm a lot like that too, you know. You are, you find are me very a, much. Find me a craft corner, I'll be there all night yeah. just crafting and yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if, yeah, as long as you're engaged, like mm -hmm. if I'm collaging or writing, I can sit still for 12 hours. Oh, but yes. as soon as my mind is not engaged, I my body has to keep moving. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, but it's painful to sit still when you're bored or yeah yeah. yeah yeah and um and what about the whole beating aspect too because you know it's 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 funny because for somebody who likes to be always be busy I thought it might drive you a little crazy to be you know in one place doing all that beating but mm. maybe well as it, as an artist I do have to try and make a living and yeah. uh the beating does sell well at my shows. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you do have to do the things that uh, pay for the table and pay mm. your way. So yeah, okay. that's beating. <laughs> that's that's part of it. That's right. Yeah. And it is fun because I do create uh, these designs. Yeah. And, yeah. It's uh, it's like little sculptures. I really think yeah. of them as little sculptures. And it's a whole process because I have to find the right beads. Yes. I do the write-up about the character and yeah. I have to design it and make it. So there are a lot of different steps. Yeah. 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 No, I love your little ones with the cats. And I remember at one point mm -hmm. we you were looking for little cat heads. And so I, I, I like to take on these projects for <laughs> Patricia too. So I'm like, how can I make a cat head out of out of material? I think we tried Fimo and felting. Oh, it was hard. I tried a yeah. lot of things. Ah, a lot Nothing of different worked. things. Yeah. yeah. Although there's a lot you could do with the clay too to make little shapes. I guess. Yeah, as I've well. tried it, but um, I haven't been happy with the results. Okay. It's working very small. Yeah. And, uh, to get the uh, the head glazed completely isn't easy either. Yeah. It's yeah. So true. I haven't found one I'm or made one I'm happy with. Yeah. 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 I know I've done clay with you a couple of mm -hmm. times, and personally, I don't love clay because I don't like the feel on my hands, mm -hmm. and I think I don't like that there's a delay between the final project and the creating the item. It has to be fired and glazed, glazed and, and all fired. that type of thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. maybe because I don't have the experience and the foresight to know what it's going to look like. But, mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, you've been doing pottery for a long time. Oh, since I, since I was 18, 17. Okay. Yeah. And, and what, uh, what was the attraction to that? I really like pottery. It's just, it's very you know you make what you envision and it's mm -hmm. it's actually easier in some ways because it's three-dimensional like life whereas yes. things that are two-dimensional are are different from life and you have it's a bit i find it harder okay now, making sculpting comes quite naturally to oh, me okay you That's can see what something looks like you just make just it look like that it. in 3d yeah. yeah but you we all like different materials like i don't exactly. like chalk pastels Oh yeah, I no. I actually tried. I did a class in chalk pastel. I remember pastel I went to one of yours because you couldn't go. I didn't really enjoy no. it either. It's yeah. too dusty. Yeah, no, I I agree yeah. with you. It's a little a little too dusty. But it's yeah. funny because you did it as a kid on your chalkboard, but it wasn't yeah. something you really 
wanted to pursue. As a kid, after. I think we're a lot more open to things. We haven't yes. gotten set in our ways. And <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. I, yeah. No, I just love that about the collaging when you with your with your neighbors when you were younger. <laughs> See, I remember, so I remember three or four, and I'm sitting on the floor, yeah. cross-legged, yeah. cut, cut, cutting. <laughs> wow, we have to weave that into your story as an yeah. artist because I yeah. think gradually we're going to develop this whole sort of persona thing and and yeah. that uh, something yeah. like that could be a part of it, it you know could. i got yeah. a flash of edward scissor hands with all his scissors on. Well, that's how i feel sometimes i feel like edward eh? scissor hands because when i'm working on collage yeah. and i'm cutting for hours i end up holding the scissors yeah. and not putting them down yeah. so i'm doing all kinds of wow. things with scissors, and it, I've sort of learned to manipulate my hand that way, hold scissors and do other things at the same time. Wow, so yeah. in, in the evolution, we're going to evolve. There, <laughs> there might be an Edward scissor hand in, in yeah. the scheme of uh, evolution. So yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of funny little quirky things with collage, like yeah. in the summer when it's really humid, mm -hmm. and I'm working here, Yes, and there's like so many tiny pieces of paper yeah. and you're, you're bare armed and bare legs yeah, because yeah. it's so hot yeah. and you sweat a bit and I will just be coated in little pieces of paper. Oh, gee, that's you wouldn't hilarious. believe it. And even when I walk out of the studio, yeah. they stick all over my feet. Oh, that's And I can funny. leave like a little paper trail around the house like cookie crap. Oh <laughs> it's my so God. funny. It's like getting glitter on you. Eh? When you're working with glitter, mm. you'll find glitter on you for days. So. And it's paper. So you find it's, paper it's on you over. for days. Yes. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> It is. <laughs> One of the hazards of uh, being an artist. Mm -hmm. That's it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so do you have uh, any uh, anything you'd like to share with the audience? Um, any any tips for any artist? Uh, things you've learned along mm. the way? Well, um, like most artists, I spent most of my life not marketing, just sitting mm. in my studio making things. And, and uh, yeah, no... You have to get out there and yeah. learn to market, and I'm still in the process of doing that now. Yeah. I've written my 24th book, wow. and I'm just starting to market, hopefully properly. Yeah. Soon. Yeah. yeah. Well, luckily now with social yeah. media, there yeah. it's a lot more accessible and the digital to get out books. there. Yeah. So, so Patricia, I know you do a lot of craft shows these days. So, so yeah. do you have any words of wisdom uh, with regards to the doing craft shows for people that want to get started? Um, I have a few words, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, one thing I struggle with, and I, I'm, I'm just the worst at it, is my table's always overcrowded because I do so many different things. Mm -hmm. And I could easily fill three tables at any craft show, and I have to bring it down to one. Yeah. And so I end up squishing too much stuff up there and uh, on that table. Yeah. And I think that's hard for people to look at stuff. And I, mm -hmm. I always try and put less, and I just... Yeah, so, you it's know, hard, having yeah. a nice table with not too much stuff nice display and yeah. uh, always having some small items because yes. you know a lot of people aren't looking for big items and if they want to support you if you have something small they yeah. can pick that up yeah. yeah yeah that's always a challenge you know I know when I go to craft shows and I see people with a very sparse display I'm envious because oh. I always tend to have too much stuff and, but you don't want to leave anything out, right? So it's just, but it, it's contradictory because sometimes people just go and they get so confused, they just keep on walking. So yeah. it's really, you need yeah. at least a couple of focused things that will pull people in. Yeah. And yeah. what about online? Where can we find you online? Oh, uh, I have a website. Uh, it's srigleyarts.com. Heather will have to yes. spell that. <laughs> I, will, I will link it yeah. up. And on Facebook, uh, I have a public page, uh, Patricia Srigley, author, artist. Mm -hmm. And on Instagram, it's my name, Patricia Srigley. And yeah. Twitter, Patricia Srigley. Nice. Luckily, I have a very rare name. So yes. It's easy to find. Yeah. And YouTube. Yeah. Which and YouTube. Oh, I forgot YouTube. You'll be doing more and more on YouTube. Yeah. So YouTube's the way to go. It's, yeah. it's really a great way to get your voice heard mm -hmm. and, and to get out yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, I'll link up uh, the videos that you have so far. Okay, and yeah. we'll have some more coming more up. More coming very soon. Definitely. I did some filming at the cottage for... Uh, I'm not sure the filming I do could work for the top secret life of Timbuktu Kalamazoo. Okay. Or it could work for... Um, universal idol okay cool but i got these little um 
they're blown glass spaceships, oh, wow. a flying saucer and a spaceship. Oh, wow. They're Christmas tree decorations, but they're quite large and they're very nice. But I made a campfire at the cottage. Oh, my goodness. And I put them in the fire and I filmed them burning. Oh, wow. That's exciting. <laughs> but what a cool idea to have a little bank of videos, too. Mm -hmm. Like, even if yeah. you're not sure what you're going to use them for, yeah. just to keep them. I want to start doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. a little video bank. There I we go. An idea. Yes, that's awesome. I'm not sure what I would do with it but I would mm -hmm. I mean mostly I do my DIY but I do have another channel that's more ex experimental so that could be really cool for that yeah isn't it amazing yeah. anybody can become a filmmaker <laughs> like when we were kids yeah, like there was nothing Impossible. like that I mean some people had the little video cameras but yeah, but now movies. you know you get yeah. your phone film a few clips and it's uh it's like creating a collage in and, video and the software is there to put it together and do you know a few special effects yeah, and, yeah that is yeah, so put cool text in. yeah um, so yeah so thanks everybody for watching and thank you patricia for coming on the oh, show thank you for having me on the show that was really <laughs> fun and uh, we'll look forward to all your uh, new projects yeah. and creations I can't so. wait to make my my vid promo video. Yes, yeah. that's next. Yeah. We'll, we'll get right on that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> We've been saying that for two years. Oh, we're, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. <laughs> so bye, everybody. See you next bye. time. Bye. You just have to. So say hi, Patricia. Hello. <laughs> we're going to go around Patricia's studio and see all of her amazing stuff. <laughs> Who are these creatures? Oh, one of those experimental project i love it and look at all these beads all these things paintings shoes <laughs> collages mannequin amazing let's get a little closer want to see one of my pieces yeah i can't wait to see them I just arrived today Oh wow, that's so cool! So this is a this is a collage that you've yeah. transferred onto a T-shirt. That's amazing! Wow, I'll have to come visit you at your craft shows. Oh, it, yeah. And look at all these oh, I like the magazines <laughs> and all the pieces. Incredible! More in the corner. That's my mascot. Amazing. And art for inspiration. And There's art. one that I did. <laughs> Amazing. This oh, is one from the angels. from the graveyard. Yeah. yeah, very cool. I love it. Thanks so much for tuning in to Stories of Starting. If you would like to inspire others with your story, big or small, be sure to reach out via storiesofstarting.com. Until next time, always remember, your story matters.